Hi, Dave. Hi, Eric. Hey, Dave. Do we curse on this podcast? Yes, Eric. Yes, we do. Are you ready, kids? Get your parents' permission, check your mailbox, and grab your shopping cart. It's time for the Adventures in Collecting podcast. I'm Eric. And I'm Dave. Welcome Welcome to to Adventures Adventures in Collecting. Collecting where we talk toy news, culture, and hauls, along with our journeys as collectors. All right, we are back. Yes. (laughs) So uh, thanks again for for joining us on uh, the Adventures in Collecting podcast. We're we're happy to have you back. Um, I would like to give a shout out to all 11 countries that are currently listening to us, which is kind of really cool. (laughs) <laughs> yes um th- thank you modern Adelinux. <laughs> yeah i have no words for that so thank you yeah so from uh f- from i i think you know we had people in italy we had people in canada the united states there were 11 countries i i honestly i can't remember which all which which 11 they were but um off the top of my head i should have made a note <laughs> i do have questions for all 11 countries all representatives for 11 countries mostly beginning and ending with why <laughs> the important thing is is that they they found us and and hopefully they're they're still here now yes <laughs> i i'm also very sorry cuz i just kicked the microphone you can leave that in cuz it's funny i it, i actually didn't hear it so i think we're i think we're okay i'll leave it in anyway so um, before we jump into our main topic, which I realized uh, a, a lot of the, the stuff that we listen to, um, it, it might be helpful to tell you what we're going to talk about later. So on today's episode, um, we, we're going to you know give you our news and hauls like usual. We have a brand new game that we're going to introduce. So fingers crossed, we're going to see how this goes. Um, and then our main topic is going to be the first in our in a, a series of topics that we'll cover you know down the line. But toys on film. So uh, this week we'll be talking about the toys that made us season three. Which just came out uh, at the recording of this episode, which is we are November 21st, um, was a week ago. Um, and that's going to be our main topic for later. But uh, without further ado, let's let's hop right into the news. I'm going to let uh, let the let the, the elder Weinbrecht uh, start us off here. Oh, OK. Um, so in what would generally be not like a big news time. um Mattel um, showed off at in the UK at Wrestling Shop Live or Wrestling Shop UK Live um, a couple more images of new figures um, and new figure packs that were not at Ringside Fest. So we are looking at um, really Elite 74 and 75 um, are two of the big things. It looks like mostly Elite 75. Um, and a couple basics as well, basic uh, series 105. And we saw the Pete Dunn figure with the NXT UK title, um, Hurricane with Soft Goods Cape, which is cool. Um, Andrade from Elite 74. Um, he's in yellow and black. That's an awesome look. Um, there's a really cool Elite two pack of Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio. Um, and then a couple basics, um, nothing insanely of note um oh there was the mandy rose elite too that was that was pretty cool um actually the big one of note is we we're getting a new r-truth figure which is awesome um r-truth has been on tv a lot with the 24 7 title so we're getting a new r-truth figure which is pretty long overdue and pretty awesome i would love an elite one so if there i think something was mentioned back at comic-con so there may be an elite or truth coming which will be awesome and that i will buy um but there is a basic coming soon so so help me out as somebody who doesn't watch wrestling all the time the 24 7 title what is that so think of it like the uh, hardcore title from back in the day where it was 24 7 rules except no weapons so Basically, a match can break out anywhere at any time, and anyone can win. So you can you can still end up losing or end or winning a belt in line at like Dairy Queen, but you can't beat somebody with a barbed wire bat in order to do so. Yes, got it. Registered. Uh, anything else in the way of news? Um, that's pretty much all I got. Um, 
There were some new WWE pops that were announced that look really cool. Um, I think the the Naomi is honestly the highlight of it. That's There's the glow in the dark one. The glow right? in the dark chase. Yeah, that's it's just a cool looking pop. So that's that's really cool. Um, yeah, I also like the um, as a as a fan of kind of like the the attitude era of things. I really like that uh, that chase diesel. Yeah, that's cool. The in, uh, in the silver tank. Well, the diesel is the regular. The Kevin Nash is the chase. Oh, okay. So the chase is the one with the the NWO, or not? Uh, not end right? Is it yes, NWO. The chase is NWO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Um, in oh, are you are you? That's the train. Oh, okay, I thought there. I thought the uh, spaceships were coming. <laughs> no, no, that's that's later. That's later. Um, <laughs> in, in case you're not aware, or you may, you may be able to hear that. Um, literally, I am shaking right now. <laughs> I I live very close to a um a a, 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 tr- a, 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 a train, train tracks. tracks. <laughs> I live very close to train tracks. Um, and it, they're they're not. It's not a commuter line. It's like a freight train. So, uh, where we record, when that train comes by, um, it shakes. It's it's almost like in, in Mary Poppins when the when the guy fires off the cannon and like everyone everyone prepares to rearrange the the paintings. Um, it's it's really close. It's very very close. It is. <laughs> distracting and they are hauling everything yeah man it during the day when that thing comes by if you're standing outside like your clothes move it's, <laughs> it's oh pretty yeah wild. the couch that i'm sitting on is sh- was shaking the microphone <laughs> i could see the microphone move i was so thrown off by that <laughs> you started giving me this look like something was terribly wrong and i that just, you know goes to show how used to it i am um in the way of of news for me, uh, we should probably keep that in too because that was actually pretty good. Oh, a hundred percent. I think maybe this is going to be the the episode that I edit nothing out of today. We're just going <laughs> to let it roll. Let and, it roll. You know. <laughs> um, in the way of in the way of news, uh, again today, uh, I keep forgetting the fucking date. Um, November twenty first, I I posted a bunch of stuff uh, from our uh, Instagram account, which is at AIC underscore podcast. If you're not following us, but uh, Tamahashi Nations via Figure Arts, uh, SH Figure Arts, um, they posted a lot of new uh, figures today, uh, especially from their their upcoming end game wave they have the final battle iron man tony stark which of course has a gorgeous um robert Downey jr uh head on it uh once again beating hasbro to the punch on that one come on hasbro i'm staring at my my end game uh my end game iron man and really really wish i had uh a an official tony stark head to put on it um they have the new look uh Captain Marvel with the short hair um, from the end of uh, end of the film. Fantastic figure, by the way. Oh my god, the effect pieces that come with it. They have like like blue flame fists and um, these like awesome like lightning bolt energy things that go around her wrists. It, it is a gorgeous figure, and there's actually a ton of detail on that costume that I didn't realize when I was watching. You know, when I saw the film. Um, yeah, gorgeous figure. Iron Spider. Uh, with the full mandibles and um, a Tom Holland sculpt, as well as uh, swapped out eyes, so that way you could do uh, instant kill mode. Mm. Um, and he comes with it looks like two uh, nano gauntlets. One that is uh, just kind of like limp fingers, and then another one that is like mid snap. Um, it looks like it's the 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 gr- aggrandized size of it so presumably it will fit on their thanos figure that they have out already from endgame um it definitely will not fit on iron man uh and then they, they also announced um a rescue figure which looks incredible um and again has a r- awesome gwyneth paltrow likeness um for an unmasked look and um and then they unleashed uh captain america as well complete with molinier and you know crazy lightning effects two shields um one that's like you know cracked in half like it appears in the film and another uh that's that's fully complete so all of those figures are due out in 
um, between April and June of 2020. They all look gorgeous. Um, if you are a Marvel Legends collector, uh, buyer beware, they do not scale very well with Marvel Legends. They are a little bit smaller. Some of the figures you could get away with, um, you'll probably be able to get away with Rescue and with uh, Spider-Man. Uh, generally speaking, since they're a little bit smaller in stature to you know the Iron Mans and Thors and Captain Americas of the world, but um, unfortunately, those those Captain America uh, the, the the Iron Man figures just be careful. Um, they will look small if scale is something that you know that you care about. If you're ultimately just playing with these things it's not going to matter but if you have them in a display it will be noticeable there are some great videos you can look up online um d star toys on youtube they do a really great job of breaking down the, the scale differences between them not yeah that that tends to be the case with the figure arts too i think um ringside collectibles just put up a thing um which is where we got the info for the stuff from the uk by the way um they have a thing because there are there's a handful of WWE figure arts figures and they are not in Mattel scale. Yeah, which is unfortunate because they are gorgeous and they're expensive. You know, they, they run anywhere between, you know, 80 to 120 dollars, depending on the figure and what it comes with. And, you know, whether it's deluxe or not. Uh, and it's unfortunate that they don't scale well, but. It's true. You could get you could get away with characters that are generally smaller or characters that are generally much larger. Like the I I have the the SH Figure Arts um Incredible Hulk from Infinity War and he scales really well with um with the Marvel Legends. I I don't have him part of my main collection. He's he's on my he's one of my desk buddies at work. Um but and but he scales really well. Uh, Thanos apparently from from what I hear scales pretty well as well. Um but yeah, that's that's all all I have for news in terms of new releases. But something that I guess we could say is toy adjacent is um, Disney Plus also launched in between the last episode and this one. So brief spoiler alert. If you have not watched uh, The Mandalorian on on Disney Plus, um, you might want to fast forward a couple minutes here because I'm going to talk about something that was revealed at the end of episode one and heavily featured in episode two and something that I literally cannot wait for them to make a toy of. Um, and I speak uh, on behalf of myself, my wife and my child who would all like a version of Baby Yoda uh, or Clone Yoda or whatever you want to call him uh, in in our lives. I I literally I have never anticipated a toy and I mean any kind of toy. I will take a plush. I will take a pop. I will take all of them. Um, I cannot wait for them to make a figure of Baby Yoda because it is just, I, I, it's the fucking cutest thing ever. And I, I, I see it on the screen and I just like melt and I scream. Like when we first saw it in the, the pod, like on that reveal, the three of us sitting on the couch and, and you know, of note, my daughter is four. So she screamed the same level that the two adults in the room. We were just like, ah, give me want, want. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need that fucking thing. <laughs> Apparently he's in the park already. Really? Yeah. I could get a baby Yoda in the park. No, he's like in the park. Like, like he's in Galaxy's Edge somewhere. No shit. Really? Yeah. I've seen a I've seen a photo. Well, I need when you when you go, I need a selfie with Baby Yoda. I don't know if it's in a location where you can do that. <laughs> OK, well, we'll see. We'll see if the, if things change. But yeah, uh, definitely. I, I mean, again, toy toy adjacent. There are a ton of toys being announced for the Mandalorian. Um from the black series already being out in two different versions already. There's a third version that has yet to be revealed in the show, but kind of leaked out. Um, there's the SH Figure Arts figure that just got announced today, the Vintage Collection figure that's coming. We're two episodes in. We still haven't met all the characters. Uh, it, so far, it's it's incredible. I don't know if, if you wanted to quickly weigh in on the awesomeness of the show or, or move on, but that's that's on you. <laughs> um, I'd like a Werner Herzog figure. <laughs> Did you hear him wax poetically about Baby Yoda yet? Did you hear him wax poetically about WrestleMania yet? No. <laughs> I feel like we have we have things that we need to exchange once we're done here. Yeah, it's not even 
you just got to read it if you've ever seen I've not read that. So Oh, it's the mine is not a, a written piece. It is him speaking about how like baby Yoda basically like brought him to his knees. It's on it is unbelievable. And apparently prior to this, the man had never seen Star Wars. Yeah, that's I, I he tends to kind of just show up when when he needs to be. And I I, th- I think the term usually used for castings like him is stunt casting. Where it's like, I, I just want to put this guy in this situation because I love him or, you know, or her. And if, if I, I mean, he's just textbook stunt casting gone right, if that's the case. Because that one scene that he's in is just incredible. His, his, like, it's, it, the show is so good. Go and watch it. If you, if you don't have Disney Plus, I think they're still offering like a seven day free trial. Just just grab it and watch the first two episodes and you'll be hooked. And not to mention there's a ton of other amazing shit on there that you could just watch all day. All, all things that are toy adjacent too, like the X-Men cartoon, the Spider-Man cartoon. It's it's wild. Um, I'm going to flip it right into halls. Uh, mine has been pretty light. Uh, the, since the last episode, I only have I have three new things. Two of which, if you're following us online, um, you saw unboxings of them. I got that Cave of Evil set, uh, the vintage collection with Luke, uh, Darth Vader, and Yoda. By far, hands down, the best Yoda in that scale ever. Period. End of story. Um, it's it's incredible. He looks just like he does in the Empire Strikes Back. It's it's a perfect Yoda figure. Um. It it's honestly worth it for that figure alone. The Darth Vader is really great. The little like pop off mask piece doesn't just kind of fall off of him. It actually stays in place. So if you are sans Empire Strikes Back looking Darth Vader, it's a two in one figure. Hands down. I mean, it looks just like him. And even the Luke with those weird janky arms, the moment you bend him at the elbows and his arms aren't hanging down alongside of him, um, even bend the elbows or just extend an arm out in front of him. It looks great. So definitely pick that up if if you collect that scale. Um, the other thing I got was the the Marvel Legends Vision. So I finally have him um, from from the latest Endgame wave. I'm just missing uh, Valkyrie, and then I can finish building uh, Bro Thor. And the other thing I got was the Vintage Collection uh, Shadow Trooper from the latest wave. Toy show. Oh yeah, that's right. We went to a toy show. I forgot about that. Yeah, we went to, we went to the toy show in Parsippany, um, which was awesome. Uh, I picked up a couple things from there as well. I, I picked up uh, Maria Hill from that that Toys R Us Shield three pack. I picked up Jan Reg, um, super like dirt cheap. I think I got him for like five bucks. And uh, I had picked up one other thing. What else did I pick up? I honestly don't remember. Ronan, didn't you? That's right, Ronan. I got Ronan really cheap too. Yeah. Uh-uh. How yeah. come I can remember what you got? <sighs> I, be, being I'm a, older. You're older, but being being a dad is like my. There are parts of my brain that are forever inaccessible to me from now on. They're just gone. I can't. I like it, it, fleeting moments, and they're gone. But yeah, so that's what I got. On to you. Um, I got a bunch of stuff. Um, as always, I got uh the WWE Elite Adam Cole. Um. Of which, by the way, Series 70 and Series 71 are starting to appear in more and more stores, so keep an eye out. Um, I was able to pick up uh, Gentleman Jack Gallagher Elite, um, and then at the toy show, I got Austin Aries NXT TakeOver Elite, I got Dusty Rhodes Elite, um, Brian Pillman Elite, and Bailey Network Spotlight Elite. And then um, I also found... um, Happy Bailey is way better than than heel Bailey. Just saying it. Yeah. Um, and then I found uh, Akira Tozawa online. Um, picked it up damaged packaging, which is fine because I took the figure out of it. So let him breathe. Um, then I got a couple pops at the toy show as well. I got um, Gizmo from the Gremlins because I never had it for some reason. Um, I got a the rock in his $500 shirt chase um i also picked up the latest hot topic exclusive jack skellington i got the hot topic exclusive invader zim and gur and um how i found out that baby yoda is in the park is because somebody picked me up uh chef figment from the parks 
Very cool. Very cool. So before we hop into our main topic, I did mention that we're going to debut a game. Um, so this game, we're going to we're going to see how it works. Um, <laughs> so we're going to we're going to call it name that toy. And uh, for this first installment of it, it's going to be my turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read one by one. I listed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bullet points. OK, good, because I had no idea. Like, yeah. So I listed seven. Yeah, da- I, I purposefully kept this from Dave. So one thing that you will notice by listening to this podcast is my brother is a near nearly endless encyclopedia of things just in general if it's something that is in his wheelhouse it is deeply in his wheelhouse it's basically how i am with star wars but with like half a dozen or more things so i started off kind of easy um this is a toy that we both played with when we were kids that's all i'm gonna say but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna read off these seven bullet points after each one, I'm going to pause and you either t- take a guess or tell me to keep going. OK, if, so it's like name that tune. If at the end of the seven bullets, if you can't get it, which, by the way, if you cannot get this at the end of the seven bullets, then the segment is. No, I'm calling 911 because you need help. Um, OK, no, if Dave cannot get this, we will throw it up on Instagram um as a highlight so that way people can guess we'll make it a question on instagram and that way people will guess if you are the first person to get it right we'll name drop you on the next episode (laughs) wins wins a free name drop yeah eventually maybe we'll have cooler prizes but for now you you get a name drop and um and we'll give you a, a certified round of applause um all right so let's get started name that toy Based on a television show, these toys were produced in 1987 by Mattel as a license of Landmark Entertainment Group. Mattel 87. Yeah. Um, that's that's a little bit too little information. Keep going? Yeah, you can keep going. The first line included six figures in the three and three quarters scale. Three villains and three heroes. Mattel three and three quarters. 1987. Landmark Entertainment Group. I feel like I should know Landmark Entertainment Group, but I don't. I'm calling it out for a reason. That's all I'm going to say, though. Like there's a, even when I read it now, granted, I know what it is because I picked it. But when I read it, I was like, oh, that's funny. Like, I remember that. Keep going. Yeah, do one more. All right. Also in the first line were two vehicles called the Power Jet XT7 and the Phantom Striker. Was it Cap- um, Captain Power? Holy shit. <laughs> yes, it was Captain Power. Wow. Man, I thought you were going to get it after the next one. I didn't think that one was going to give it away. What What gave it away? Did you Did you just remember the names of the ships? Yeah. Fuck. It was the interlocker, I think, was the other one, wasn't it? Um, I just went with the first line. That was not part of the first line. Because the... The first line was, was those six guys, the two ships, the, like, and then each... There was like a good guy like power up station, like power station and a bad guy power station. Yeah, that was like the it almost looked like a Stargate. The good guy one a little bit. Yeah. And. um, I thought of it. Well, I guess it would have been around the same time, but it almost was like where Robocop would sit. Um, yeah, but uh, Stargate's cool, too. I had the power the good guy power up station. Yep. Um. Yeah, the ship was... What were the names of the ships again? 
It was the Powerjet XT7. Which was Captain Power's ship. Yep. And the Phantom Striker. Yeah, I had both of those. I didn't, I don't think I had the Interlocker, which was the other. It was almost like it was like a ship that was on a tripod and it looked like, um, I guess it kind of looked like a video game. It looked like a Super Nintendo. So do you remember the name of the bad guy? I don't. All right. So I'm going to read the rest of the bullet points. You can tell him. You'll tell him. And I'll be like, that was him. All right. So the rest of the bullets had Dave not gotten it there. The next one would have been the main antagonist was named Lord Dread. Okay. All right. Then the one after that, the bullet after that would, would have been the gimmick of this toy line was that when played along with an accompanying VHS, the ships and some accessories interacted with the TV. Yeah, and it was cool because they had actually like a TV show. Yeah, yeah, here it is, the interlocker. Um, yeah, I can't get a good picture of it right now, but... Uh, and then and then the last, the last yeah, bullet... Yeah, see, it's sitting on like a tripod and it kind of oh, looks like yeah. a Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, last, the last one, which would have been the, the kind of layup if you had needed it from there, was the vehicles and ships also could be used as a form of laser tag. Yeah, Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future, I think was what it was called. I think so. I just um, have Captain. I just wrote down Captain Power. And there was, so there were videotapes that were animated, except I think Captain Power was in them. Mm -hmm. There um, was like an, an intro to kind of set it up. And then Lord Dread was in it, and it was like, you went on one was a training mission. The other one was like an intermediate and the other the third one was diff, was hard. Yeah. And you had like these reactive lights on the screen that either shot at you or you shot at it. Um, like there were these like yellow flashing lights that came and they were the weapons that were being shot at you. Yeah. And then the ships when you shot the evil ships they had red lights um and so you almost had to like fly out of the way from the little light reactor that was on the ship from getting hit by the 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 yeah. blast that was shot at you um or you could just cover it with your hand <laughs> you could <laughs> and what was cool was on the back you had this like button and it would it would you know do 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 like, i could still remember the sound yeah yeah and um you know, every time you shot something, you would get more power. But when it shot you, you would lose power. And if you lost power, enough power to like for the ship to explode, it ejected you out of the ship, which was fantastic. Um, and then there was a live action television show that was on weekend mornings, um, either Saturday or Sunday, probably both. That was a narrative TV show. But the characters wore reactive clothing so you could just sit there and just shoot bad guys with your ship um during the show and it was so bizarre because it was like you're watching a, a basically a bad drama um that you're shooting your ships at now what i didn't realize when i was doing research for this bit that the point of of having uh, of playing the VHS and also the during the TV show was to get as many points as you could on your ship. So that way, when the show was over, you and your friends could play laser tag because the, sh the points that you earned were ended up being your hit points. Yes. And that was the only way to do them. Like if you fired up the ship, it like by default gave you, let's say like three. Um, but if you sat and watched the show, you can get 99, like, yeah. And then, you know, you would essentially leave the ship on, wait for the show to be over and then do battle with your friends. Well, no, there was a switch. Yeah. There was a switch on the ship where it, f you either had, um, infrared to shoot the television or a, like almost like a strobe light mm -hmm. to shoot the other ship. Yep. Which, honestly, like we're we're gonna cover this on a on a later episode. One of our our mutual friends, Heather's Heather's boyfriend, um, he collects amiibos, the the Nintendo amiibos. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do a whole episode on like gaming toys and like that kind of thing. And while I was thinking, well, about I think that, we've pretty much covered Captain Power. <laughs> yes, but there are, there is a whole other world out there of uh, and, and the soldiers of the future and and history of of like games and toys, kind of you know 
uh, blurring the line between a video game and a toy. It's just when I was thinking about that topic for for early next year, I started thinking about Captain Power. And literally, I was walking from my car into ShopRite one day, and I was like, oh, man. I, this would be an awesome idea for for a little game. So next time it's your turn. Did you just come up with you thought of Captain Power and then came up with the game or did you? I was thinking of the toys and video games topic. And then I thought of Captain Power. And then I went, oh, my God, I wonder when the last time Dave thought about Captain Power. <laughs> and, and then before I, today, I couldn't tell you. And then I thought about that game. 1990. <laughs> I just like it, yeah you, you you still continue to to impress me all these years later your your en- encyclopedic brain is crazy all right so for those of you at home keeping score uh dave won eric zero so the next next time we do this it will be dave's turn to try to stump me with a toy um I, you know i i, I think I I think this will actually work out pretty well. That was fun. Uh, It aired from September 1st, 1987 to March 27th, 1988. March 27th. Yeah, it was. They took it off the air. It was it was an anti-birthday gift. (laughs) Happy birthday. Hope you didn't want to watch more of this show. (laughs) All right. So um, that being said, which actually works out to be a great segue. Captain Power, obviously a a strong piece of nostalgia for both Dave and I. Um, It's older than you. It is older than me by by one year. Um, We watched uh, season three of The Toys That Made Us, and uh, it's going to be our first segment in Toys on Film. So um, the the season is four episodes, four very, very big topics that we could very obviously spend entire episodes on. Mm -hmm. And we discussed that before getting into this. So this is going to be like a very top level. a review of of the season you know just our thoughts just as we were going through it yeah. kind of jumped out because if you if you think that there isn't some point down the line where we're going to do at least one episode on wrestling toys you, you're listening to the wrong podcast um <laughs> but uh the the four episodes uh you can watch them in any order there's there's no like frame narrative that runs through the season um I, this is the third season of the toys that made us which is a uh, netflix exclusive um that's where you can find it but the four episodes were uh teenage mutant ninja turtles power rangers wrestling figures and my little pony let's let's start with um we'll we'll we'll, we'll Tackle them in order, right? So the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one is technically episode one, I think, of the season. Um, Just some some takeaways for me. Um, I actually had no idea that this was another one of those situations where, like, I knew the Ninja Turtles started off as a comic book, as an independent comic book. Um, I had no idea that their the cartoon was was constructed to support the toy line. I I always kind of had assumed, uh, unlike He-Man and Transformers, that like the comic book led to a cartoon, which led to a toy line. Um, I I had no idea that that they, and I mean I guess that's that's different now. You know, like most of the the toy lines that are out there, um, that I could think of, most of them are kind of after the fact. You know, like a, a TV show comes out, they make toys. Um, I think with a few exceptions, like those like LOL surprise things, you know, I don't think they have a TV show. Um, I could be wrong, but um, I had no idea that the TV show was actually constructed to support the toy line because I, I mean, I remember watching it on TV in, in multiple, you know, multiple generations and seeing it, it kind of different over the years. But well, I mean, that goes back even if you think of like the secret wars and superpowers um they are comic book characters but the toys were made to kind of they were made and then there was a cartoon made like secret wars was a storyline based off of the figures interesting yeah it's it's weird how how i guess like the 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 80s informed their the toys i mean there there weren't networks dedicated to you know 24/7 cartoons Right. So, you know, it was a driving factor. It was a place to to kind of gather um, and see all the commercials and stuff for the toy lines and everything, too. Yeah. Cartoons were on Saturday mornings and sometimes after school. Like that was 
now one one of my one of my favorite parts from the Ninja Turtle episode again something I had no idea I remember when the I guess it was the second film actually Secret Secret of the Ooze came out but I remember those to- the figures that came out for Secret of the Ooze they kind of had that like they're a little bit rubberier. Well, they were the turtles from the movie. Yeah, they looked like the the Jim Henson turtles. Yeah, but I had no idea that the first movie was at one time the highest grossing independent film of all time. Yeah, I didn't think of it as independent. I guess because because it was the turtles. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. I. I just. I had no idea. And that. That guy. I. Sh- I should have written down his name. I wrote down really shitty notes for this. I'm sorry. But the. The guy who. Who approached the original creators of the turtles mm-hmm. to kind of get them to. Um. To lend out the license to like that guy. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Like, for, for a guy that was you know faking it basically until he made it. Um. You know. Right. Re- he said he rented a suit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sh- showed up and um, was actually hawking this this giant foam turtle that they had made. Um, <laughs> was taking it like in the car with him and going out to toy manufacturers and basically being like, "Turn this into a toy. This mm-hmm. is the next He Man." Um, the only other takeaway that I had uh, from from it was I didn't know all of the drama between the partners who who created it. Um. I thought that that was really interesting, you know, how they kind of fell away and it seems like maybe they're getting back together and they still maintain somewhat of like an independent comics rights to it. Yeah. Um, they have a real their story is to me was actually the most interesting part of of the the episode. Yeah, and um, I, I would say if you ever see um, I've never seen Kevin Eastman at a Comic-Con, but if you ever see Peter Laird at a Comic-Con, um great person to talk to oh really you've you've met him before yeah oh awesome yeah he does seem like a really nice guy yeah, he'll both us- of them do i mean he'll usually be like just like he's been in like artist alley at new york comic-con before just cool just there yeah was there did, did you have any other specific takeaways from that episode um it's funny when you see like that ninja turtles line start to wind down when you get like baseball turtle and stuff like that, like that's and we and you had some of those. Like I remember, no, you had those. I had those. That was yeah. me. Okay, because I know at some point our collections kind of like combined. Mm-hmm. But we had like the Technodrome. We had um, all of the like original turtle, like the basic line turtles. I had the first four. Yeah, I had the first series easy first couple. I remember Splinter with that like the um, with the soft goods mm-hmm. cloak. April O'Neil was the short pack. Yeah. Couldn't find her. Yep. But we had her. Mm-hmm. We even had the van. We had the turtle, the turtles van. Yes, they did. But yeah. Th- and that's one of the things that in general about the toys that made us like watching every each and every episode. There was with the exception of My Little Pony. But I'll get to that because I do have an interesting story with that. Um, I remember at least something from all of the episodes. Like like a fond memory about a, a toy mm-hmm. from all of them, and it, it's it's interesting. Like it's interesting to see these, you know, um, and and some of them pretty pretty famous uh, figures on there. Like I think Kevin Smith was on the was he on the Turtles one? Yeah, yeah. he was. Um, like some of these these collectors, and there's there's a great um, there's a great story from a collector turned creative in the My Little Pony episode. Which was an awesome story. Yeah, that was cool. Um, you know, what, let's just let's just jump right to the My Little Pony one because I, I just name dropped it twice. Mm-hmm. Um, the the coolest thing from that episode was the story of the person who is now running the TV show. The, well, she the, created friendship is magic. Yeah, yeah. Um, she actually wrote and and they show the letter. Her her mother had the foresight to create a copy of them before they sent them in. She wrote a letter to it's hasbro my little pony is hasbro yeah she yes. wrote a letter to hasbro because she could not find some of the ponies that she wanted and in in like kind of a barter a child's mind bartering system she wrote this letter with ideas for new ponies in exchange for them sending the ones that she was missing hasbro 
you know, obviously they, they I'm sure they get a ton of mail. You know, they can't respond to everything. They never responded to her, but that moment for her, you know, resonated and she stayed a collector and kept collect- collecting them over the years, even through like some of these like weird, awful pony looking things that they made, you know, in, in like the nineties, mm-hmm. you know, rough, rough stuff. But, um, you know, she's, she stayed involved and actually ended up being the person who created the modern My Little Pony and, and, and is still doing it, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, great, great story. I mean, it's, it's just like one of those things where it's, where it's like, don't, don't stop believing. But, um, it was great watching that, uh, with, I watched that episode in particular with my wife because I know that she played with My Little Ponies when she was, when she was a girl and watching her watch the episode was what I'd imagine watching, you know, like the Power Rangers episode with me was like where when a pony would come up on the screen, she'd be like, oh, I remember that one. That was the flocked version and it was hard to find. And like, you know, mm-hmm. she she gives me shit sometimes for for the toy stuff. I mean, it's kind of natural, but like it was fun to sit there and watch her kind of geek out about it. Um, and of course, they got into the whole brony thing, which is a, a whole world in and of itself. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was uh, it was interesting too to see the giant, my pretty pony that the original toy that was yeah that it started off as like a like a creepy, uh, which reminds me of that Sven that's out now. Yeah, and it looks like sim. Sven's probably a little bit bigger, but like that thing was chunky. Like it was, it was a, a big. It was a large toy. It was a big toy. Um, yeah, it's just it's that toy line. Th- this is this is the Hello Kitty of of this season. Like it is just a weird, like how the toy line was the the inception of the toy line. The fact that like they were marketing it as like no, we don't want girls to treat these horses as horses. We want them to treat them like people dolls and do their hair. And mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it's just a a bizarre concept that landed and resonated with so many people. And I mean, it'd be, there's there's a lot of people who have an affinity for horses, you know, the, the, the entire like equestrian lifestyle and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, I guess there's there's a market for it. But the fact that it landed as heavily as it did is is still really cool. Yeah. Um, and the one the one other thing I wanted to say about My Little Pony last year, um, Hasbro did. It must have been some kind of anniversary. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the 30th, the 30th anniversary of My Little Pony, probably. Um, sounds like it would be pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, they did repacks in the original packaging of the original uh, five or six ponies. Oh, that's cool. And I picked one up for for Maddie. And again, at that time, she's she's three now four. Um, it is literally one of her favorite toys. Oh, that's cool. And it's it's just so incredible to see a thirty year old toy resonate with a four year old like it's it's you know some of these things are are timeless um one of the other episodes was power rangers yeah and by far for me this was the coolest episode i had no idea that there were seven billion different crews of power rangers so when i was in college um i had a friend that was super into common rider and he kept saying, like, you should watch Common Rider. It's awesome. You should watch Common Rider. And finally, like, I kind of threw him a bone. And I was like, I will watch this just so that you shut up about it. I'm honestly sick about hearing it, hearing about it. And I'm watching. And I'm like, this is oddly familiar. Like, these action sequences, like, feel very familiar. And I asked him and I was like, why do I feel like I've seen this before? Because he he literally sent me to, like, the beginning, like, had me going back. And he was like, oh, I didn't tell you this is Power Rangers. But like the original Power Rangers in Japan, Mm -hmm. they just reuse these action sequences, at which point my mind was blown um, because then, as they explain in the episode, the the brilliant, brilliant mind of Hayam Saban was I'm going to take these action sequences, which are batshit crazy. And I'm going to cut in. But more importantly, already produced. Yes. And I'm going to cut in American actors. And it was seamless. Like, I mean, the, it, 
it's cheesy. It's a little corny. In you know. theory, you'd never know. You'd never know. And the fact that the the thing that really blew my mind. So I already kind of knew that going into it. The whole thing with Stan Lee and Japanese Spider Man was l- shocking. <laughs> like I, 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 I wanted. I want to watch it. <laughs> I stopped what I was doing and and audibly went, what the fuck is going on right now? I I immediately said I needed to see that. And yeah, I and like what what unbelievable dumb luck that the had that head of creative that was working under Stan Lee ended up going to Fox Kids and like, oh, yeah, I know that show. Yeah, it's unreal that the Power Rangers probably would not have existed without her. If mm-hmm. she had not come across that twice and the second time been and in it, it still p- almost didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Her job. She said she put her job on the line mm-hmm. to, 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 to air it. It's and amazing. Th- and then on top of it, they had to pay. They had to pay local stations kickbacks from the, the toy toys. line sales in order to get them to air the damn thing, which is borderline unheard of. But yeah, that, that this was a big episode for me because I feel like there's this this phenomenon that I'm starting to realize as I get older where I was watching that episode and watching the clips of the Power Rangers that they were showing and showing the toys. Like, I remember the ones where you click the belt and their heads spin around and they change. Like, I remember those. which were brilliant. Yeah, I remember all and impossible to find, by the way. I remember all of the role playing accessories. So like I remember like the the knife, the dagger flute. I remember the Zords. I remember the they had these gloves that you could buy that had buttons in the fingers and, and thumbs so that you could, you know, they made like punching sounds and stuff. I remember all of that. Apparently all of that <laughs> and all of the Power Rangers I watched happened between 1993 and 1994 because then it changed to, to the next iteration of power rangers and i do not remember that at all like i basically they they made the show they killed rita they brought in zed i remember that well they didn't kill rita they like locked her in a vat or something they brought in zed they made the movie with ivan ooze which they unbelievably did not touch on in in this which is crazy because that had its whole own line of toys which were awesome um but then it was like the movie came out and I was done because I don't remember anything else that came after that. I don't remember Power Rangers in space. I don't remember the ones with like the stars on their helmets. The I don't remember the ones with the cars or trains like it, it, I feel like I was heavily, heavily, heavily into this thing for maybe like a year and a half and then done. That yeah, there it. were there were pirates. I saw like I don't remember it. Yeah, but, like some crazy, crazy stuff. And it's funny because like they 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 track the um the success based on the toy sales with it, where it's literally like you know uh, <laughs> the toys didn't sell well for the trains ones because you know who if wants pe- trains? Who wants trains? They didn't sell well for the cars ones because if they're going to buy car toys, they're going to buy transformers or Hot Wheels or my or you know micro machines. But um, yeah, it, that that was a, a crazy episode, and especially the relationship between the show and um, the toy maker with that one, where it was kind of like part of their DNA to have, um, oh, what was the name of the company? Bandai. Bandai. Thank you. To have Bandai producing the toys throughout the basically the entire history of the show, including the the Japanese Common Rider stuff, mm-hmm. where now Hasbro has it and they have the global license to it. So like. It's just not Bandai anymore. And we've talked about it several times, how how gorgeous that the Hasbro line is for these figures. They're doing a great job with it. They're definitely doing it justice. But I didn't I, I felt kind of like bad at the end mm-hmm. <laughs> at the end of the episode. <laughs> um, and then, of course, the, the last episode was the wrestling episode. Yeah. And the one thing that I found kind of craziest was um, that basically every executive from every toy company that ever made wrestling toys has worked at every toy company that has made wrestling toys. <laughs> and if they didn't work at a company, they started one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that one, the, the first thing I said, my first note for the wrestling one is just Galoob. I forgot about Galoob toys. Oh, those WCW figures are great. And what's... So this was my impression of this episode. And before we watched it, I watched it with my girlfriend. And I said, I'm very curious to see how they do this in 45 minutes. Um, Because there is a lot. Um, 
it is such a large spectrum. It's a wide net that you can cast in order to do wrestling toys um, because you have American brand, um, companies, you have international companies, you have Japanese wrestling toys, you have Mexican wrestling toys, um, and all of these different companies from these different countries. So how do you do this? Um, the focus was on American wrestling toys and American wrestling companies. And I think the smartest thing about this episode was it didn't treat it like it was good for people that knew what they were watching because it didn't try to over teach you about the history, but it taught people who had no idea about any of it enough where they can understand what they were looking at. And I thought that parallel was so brilliantly done that it was like, I thought I was going to have to explain a lot more of, well, this is this company and this is what happened here, but they did it for you. Um, and it was great. And they had um, they, they had some really great uh, voices thrown in there. Um, I, I really appreciated the Cody Rhodes parts of it. Mm -hmm. You know, him talking, like having like a wrestler on there to kind of give some context. Even if you didn't know, you know, who Cody Rhodes was or, you know, the, the history behind his name and, you know, how he's kind of really a third generation um, wrestler. Uh, it, it was it was really great how they didn't treat the the audience like they were dumb. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time. But they also didn't treat wrestling like it was dumb. Exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. They treated it like a bit like a business mm -hmm. like ju just like any of the other episodes like a, it's this is a form of entertainment mm -hmm. you take that at that face level and this is what was going on in that form of entertainment because during the 80s and 90s there was a lot going on and the toys really kind of almost dictated what was going on and i'm not going to get too too much into this because this will go off into its own episode at this point yeah um but the fact that there were some cool things that I had mentioned um, or that I had noticed um, that I mentioned, like, for example, when they showed the AWA Remco figures, th those are some of the most rare and most expensive wrestling figures out there um, because it was. Yes, they were national, but they were ultimately Midwest regional. And I remember finding those in supermarkets. So I have or had in at some point, like I had one of the Shawn Michaels figures. That is, especially if you have the glasses and the T-shirt that came with it, that is a very rare figure. <laughs> well, didn't you have Hawk and Animal? Too? I had Hawk and Animal and I had Paul Ellering. Um, I, I had a bunch of figures um of the awa figures um there was one point where one of the ljn employees had the basic hulk hogan which is you know series one for ljns it's as common of a common as you're going to get next to demolition axe which is one of the rarer figures that was on that last ljn line um the wrestling superstars 89 that they mentioned the, the black cards the black cards and you know, you would think, oh, the Hulk Hogan figure is worth more. Axe is worth so much. Yeah, I actually like I remember each and every iteration of those figures for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Like, like I, my notes are actually really funny. They're they're almost like um, it's almost like a haiku. It's like Galoob. Haven't thought of that name in a while. Lots of twists and turns. I gave our mom a black eye with one of those original ones. No, that was an LJN. Yeah, one, an LJN. One of the big one of the big guys. Well, the Galoobs and the LJN are different. No, no, no. Oh. Galoob was my my first note. That that was my 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 progression as I went through. But like, I remember those big chunky ljn figures mm -hmm. and i th always thought it was great how big those were and the fact that one of the fun things that was that was revealed in the in the doc was that they weren't supposed to be like that, that no was that was supposed to be the two up yeah yeah so i also learned something new about toys that i didn't know that they make a giant mold of it in order to craft all the detail and then shrink it down yeah did not realize that that's how toys were made i don't know if that's still the case at which point there's where's my fucking admiral haldo three and three quarters inch figure shrink it down um 
Uh, <laughs> I, I have a feeling with the fact that everything's rendered at this point, it's not yeah. necessary. Yeah, they're not sculpting them anymore. Yeah, because those that was when they were doing actual sculpts. Yeah, we um, it's one of those things where they're doing it on a computer now. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. But um, <clears throat> no, that it was awesome to see. You know, and I remember the ECW figures like I remember all of them. And to the point of what they said on the show, the idea was that if you kept your figures in scale with the competitor figures, you allowed the fans to have the the the, the grudge match of their dreams. Mm -hmm. And I remember when, e when ECW was kind of at that height of popularity before Vince bought it. And they started pu putting out those figures. Like, I say height of popularity and like cult status, right? Well, for ECW, I, I it was yeah. But I remember how much we wanted. Like, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if we had a Taz figure or like Tommy Dreamer mm -hmm. or Sandman, like Sabu? Yeah. And we were able to get some of those guys. We I think we I still have my RVD somewhere. But um, yeah. I mean, all these episodes absolutely filled with nostalgia. Like like Dave said, especially with the wrestling one. And I promise we'll we'll come back and revisit wrestling figures. Um, but the plan is uh to go through some other really great moments in film and TV with toys. Um, over time, you know, we'll 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 revisit this topic. We have two other seasons of the toys that made us. With the success of this season, I can't imagine that there's not going to be a fourth season. You know, in the works. You know, there's nothing official announced yet but there are an incredible amount of toy lines that they can revisit and, and show captain power <laughs> captain power <laughs> um so i guess let, let's put let's put a kind of like a, a seal of approval on this um we're we're, we're just going to do thumbs up thumbs down i can't think of anything more creative um so is is this a uh thumbs up for season three dave yeah uh, I'm, I'm going to do the same. It's an, it's an easy thumbs up for me. Um, again, that's uh, season three of The Toys That Made Us. Uh, it's available on Netflix. Um, with that, we're going to wrap it up for today. Uh, thank you again for, for sticking with us. And um, Captain Power. Thank you, dear listener, for hanging out with us today. Subscribe, rate, and review us wherever you listen. And then tell your friends to do it. Thanks also to Joe Azari, the golden voice behind our intro. Our music is Game Boy Horror by the Zombie Dandies. Find more about them both in our show notes. Follow us on social media at AIC underscore podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Stop by and say hi. Show us your toy hauls and share your toy stories. Maybe we'll talk about it in a future episode. Don't try this at home. Voidware prohibited and some assembly required. Each sold separately, not a flying toy. Consult a physician if your toy run exceeds more than four hours. This has been a non-productive media presentation. Executive producer, Frank Hablawi. This program and many others like it on the Non-Productive Network is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Please share it, but ask before trying to change it or sell it. For more information, visit non-productive.com.